Hi guys, my, welcome to Winsome Cottage Garden. My name is Hannah, I'm so glad that you decided to join me today. We are back in the city and it is a very warm one. It's actually not that hot index wise, like it's probably only like 79-ish, but it's excessively humid. So this is gonna be a bit of a sweating project, but today we are finally planting the two roses that I bought earlier on this season. And I'm sure you've seen this one because we I bought two of these. I bought one for me and one for my parents and they have it in a pot at the cottage. This is a David Austin Munstead wood shrub rose which I don't have any flowers right now, but it's got this most beautiful dark red colored um, bloom that smells absolutely glorious. We'll get into a little bit more of the specifics after we've planted, but that's one of the ones we're planting today. The other one we're planting today, which I've had a little bit and I integrated it into my watering system, is an At Last Rose by David Austin. You can see the shape maybe get a little affected by where it was being watered, but I'm not worried about it. I'm going to put it in a spot and it'll put on some nice new growth yet this season. I am going to deadhead it when I put it in because you can see it's got a lot of spent blooms on it. But this is a really pretty like orangey pink rose that just also smells glorious. You know, I love roses. They can be a bit fussier. That's what I've always thought. So uh, the only roses I actually have in my yard at this point are the Rugosa, which you do nothing to, as well as three climbing roses. And I have enjoyed them so much that even with the extra maintenance that they need, I've decided they're worth it. So with that in mind, I have started adding, planning to add and going to add right now in this video, a couple of shrub roses into the yard. But to do that, I had to make some space. So you actually saw where one of these roses is going in the last video. Right here, in this gloriously big space. Now, I actually have a couple holes that I'm gonna walk around, see if I can find some dirt, because I usually have a bucket or two of dirt that I keep until I have a home for it. Um, but it, this is where one of them's going. I actually do think I want it I'm trying to decide the exact location because you can see that this is the center of this like arrangement, but does it make sense for it to be centered on the door? My The back of my house is kind of blah. There's not much breaking it up, which is why I love that arrangement there this year. Previous years, it's gone right in front of this window, which eventually, I might think about getting a window box, but that would impede the seating that I added this year, which is a vast improvement to the falling apart Anirondacks I had previously. So um, I do think that I want to kind of center it in this space uh, a little bit that way, just because I did put some sea holly in here. I don't remember if this is the blue or the green, but you can see there's one plant right there and one plant right there. Um, and I'll definitely fill this in with some lower growing things. This this is where the Munstead wood is going. It doesn't get massive, only gets two and a half by three and a half, so I think it'll poke over the top cutely and I'm going to enjoy it. Um, and I think this is a really good spot for it. It's going to be towards the back of it. So hopefully there'll be a space for some low growing bits and bops along the side. Since it's not full grown quite yet, just for the season, I am also going to be popping, excuse the weeds I'm battling, this guy. This guy is getting popped into the ground finally. This is the incredible hydrangea that I bought and it fried while I was away for vacation, but I noted that there was still some good growth left in the stem, so I cut it back, and lo and behold, it's coming back. Now, it's not gonna be living in this space forever. Um, that Incrediball is actually going to be replacing an, an, one of the Annabelle I have here. I'm tired of the flopping. I want the improved version. But the Annabelle, they're gonna move to the cottage or they're gonna be put on the side of my house. Either way, now is definitely not the time of year when they have their full foliage and those big blooms to support to be moving them. So I'm going to move them in the spring. That being said, this needs to get in the ground, um, especially with all the stress it's already been under. And I think putting it in a temporary space and then moving it next year is better than leaving it in a can and hope it survives. So 
it, I'm going to place the rose exactly where I want it. And then I'm going to put this next to it, but with the plan that it is not staying there. This is just like a temporary holding spot that I know it gets good water. I know it gets good sun. And it'll help this plant recover and survive. And then next spring, it will be moved to its final resting place. To show you, the at last rose is going to go in the bank that was behind me just a moment ago. I am actually going to move the Magic Wands Veronica forward a little bit more. Um, so it's probably going to end up going right amongst these mushrooms and then put the Atlas Rose behind it. You might not be able to see fully, but there's a good amount of space there that I think the rose can fill in and really uh, add a bright pop of pinky peach to this. It should complement the yarrow a bit and it'll be well, honestly, the yarrow will bloom probably right when the Atlas Rose is lulling. So it'll be nice to add another pop of spring color in here as well. So you'll see me move this guy and then we'll get it in and we'll go over some other details. that chill for just a second hey we're going inside okay update we're gonna pause on this project for the evening and pick it up tomorrow hopefully it's not as hot as they're predicting it to be um i believe i disturbed some ground bees some kind of bee that lives in the ground uh, i thought it was just one because uh, i did get stung i thought it was just one and all of a sudden i realized there were many pouring out of the hole i had been um digging and they're still out there i actually had to uh, abandon my shirt because they were attacking it see the trip you can see the trip i did grab my camera and phone but i left everything else out there and then i whipped my shirt off because they were actively stinging it as i was holding it away from my body and then they started going under it so i just left it i actually brought Maisie inside I thinking oh i just keep going because like it looked like they were settling down but um no they were not settling down so we're going to give them an hour and then I'll go pick up my stuff and we will pick this project up tomorrow. We are back. It is the next day. I have been scoping out the situation and I have determined where these bees are coming from. Let me show you and can I tell you what my plan is though? I don't know if it's a good one. So this is the hole I dug yesterday. You probably saw me abruptly stop. I'm not getting too close because I actively see where they're coming out, but do you see those two little bits? That is where the bees have been going out and in of. Uh, my plan, since it is, I think they must be, oh, there's one you just saw it come out. I think they must be nesting like right under the deck. Ooh, they're just coming. So they must be nesting under the deck. I don't have any spray and in general I don't like to discourage pollinators. Um, I did get stung four times yesterday. I don't believe my dog got stung uh, and I'm not allergic so that's okay. No one in my family is or that I know in my neighbor's vicinity is. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do leave that project to the very last thing. Instead, I'm going to go plant my at last rose first, move the Veronica, plant the at last rose, and then come back and plant this rose. And I just keep seeing bees going in and out now that I know they're there. I'm seeing the signs. I personally don't think since the hole's already dug and I'm just going to quick get the rose out and in the ground, pack the water around, it should be okay. Because it, they allowed me to like dig the first hole. It wasn't until I dug the second hole and made it like I did it first. Then I kind of looked and checked the soil levels. Then I went deeper. That's when they, I pissed them off. This could be really s silly. I'm not an expert, but this is what I'm going to do. So I might look for an alternate place to plant the Incredible since it is just going to be for the winter kind of thing. It will be moved. I just don't know. So what I'm going to do first though is get my Atlas Rose planted because its position is not dictated by um, anything else. 
So I'll get that planted, I'll probably get the Munstead wood planted, and then I'll see if I've pissed the bees off, if I think I can add one more, we'll, we'll, if I'm too hot. Uh, that's the other thing I'll add. It is currently like 8.15, 8.20 at night, so I only have about an hour of light, and that's like sketchy light at that. And it's like 86 degrees and so, so humid. <sighs> I'm just really warm. But tomorrow's supposed to be even worse, like in the 90s, and it's supposed to thunderstorm and be like super humid all day. This is my window of opportunity this week. I wanted to get this done last night, but obviously I managed to stir up a whole hornet's nest. I keep saying bees. I do think they're hornets of some kind, and I managed to stir them all up, um, and so I had to go inside until they calmed down. I actually didn't even come down out to pack up some of my items until after dark. So, okay. At last rose first. It's very warm, so I'm sweating, even though it wasn't that hard. So let me show you a little closer what it looks like now that it's in and the mulched a little bit. As soon as we're done here, I'm actually going to set up a sprinkler um, because the dirt was very dry, very dry, um, to a point that makes me wonder if the drip is working in this section. So probably... I don't, I don't think I have enough daylight tonight, but I will be checking it a little bit later. Which, if it's not working, that makes sense, because some of these things are looking a wee bit dry. So I'm going to have to do some troubleshooting, now that I'm looking at it closely. So here's where I moved the magic wands down. I honestly didn't move it a ton. It moved maybe for about a foot 18 inches. So that'll give me a lot of space to walk around it, uh, as well as nice airflow for the plant itself. And I think right now the the magic wand is as tall as it'll get. Hopefully, I think it might not be as quite as wide as it could be. It's not that old, it's only two or three years old. I also don't know if it's been watered as much as it should have now that I'm looking at it closer. So I'm gonna get the water figured out. I might end up pulling all the drip and redoing it next year. It's something I've been contemplating, but I've been putting it off because it's a heck of a lot of work. Anyway, today you can see that this, the magic wands provides just a little pop of color and then the rose is right there. And I think long term it'll be just this nice little round ball of like peachy pink pretty flowers that'll look so pretty against the dark sedum I have right here and then actually make the, the white wands pop. And the other thing that I didn't really realize until I'm seeing it just like this, I like the breakup of the white because I have a purple colored creeping geranium, the purple uh, sedum, and then I have the ornamental onions, which are purple. And they're all different shades of purple, but I think having that bright white pop and then the eventual like peachy color is gonna break it up really nicely. So I'm actually really pleased with the amount of color that's in this space right now. And I don't know if you noticed them, but aren't these just the sweetest? I've actually had one, two, three ceramic mushrooms for quite some time. And I picked these five small ones up um, while I was on my vacation earlier this year in Northern Michigan. I think they're meant for indoor plants, but I thought they make the perfect fairy ring that complemented this space quite well. A little bit of whimsy. Now on to the area that is making me nervous. Let's see how this goes. I'm gonna set you guys up. Yeah, that's definitely where they live definitely where they live. Hopefully they're happy enough to just let me 
get this in the ground without exterminating everything, which I probably should buy some in case I have to, because they, now that I know they're there, long term I can't have them in my decking area, it's not great. But um, yeah, anyway, let's see if they let me plant this rose. Okay, that's in two. I was very cautious. Did not alarm the bees. That was a little worried when I had to dig the hole for the um, incredible hydrangea a little bigger. So this guy, again, right here to reiterate, only gonna be here for the winter. I just wanted to get him in the ground since I almost killed him already in a place I know he's getting water. His roots can grow, all that jazz. He was really hard to keep watered and it's not the time of year to move the plants that are in the location he is going. So ignore him for the purposes of this. But look how cute that little rose is. Now it's only supposed to get two and a half to three feet tall and wide. And it may have been, like the center of it is right here. So that is wet, that's at least 18 inches. So I feel like more than enough space to the wood. Um, it's got some nice growth on it. It's been flowering a lot this season, so I'm really excited to see what it does. I top dressed both of these with some bark mulch since I knew I was kind of swinging up around a lot of dirt. And it's towards the start of the year, the time of year that the mulch I did in the spring is getting a little thin. You may have also seen me add some compost. I did some land and seed compost with this rose as well. I thought I would quick, before we end this video, give you a couple more details on the roses that I put in. I just realized I had a dirt mustache. I have cleaned it. Hopefully you will not hold it against me. Uh, but the first rose I planted was an Atlas Rose by Proven Winners. Uh, and here is a picture from the tag of what it looks like. It's a zone five through nine. It's this really pretty, like peachy pink apricot color that I just love. It's supposed to be a landscape rose that is disease resistant and reblooms. I actually remember walking past this at the garden center up north, like early June and smelling it and it just smelled divine. And at the time I was like, oh, I don't have a spot for it. And then I was thinking about it and thinking about it and I said I need to go back and get it. Um, and they had sold out of the small size that I'd wanted, mostly because it was half the price of the big one. So I just said, oh, you know, I'll wait. And then the next week when I went to the garden center, it was there, they'd restocked. So I snatched one up uh, and I had already figured out where it was gonna go. Um, so I added that to the bed up near the red bud. It'll add some extra spring interest. I actually forgot until I was in there that I have a huge drift of crocus in there. So I definitely disturbed some of them. So I'm really hoping that it does well there. I, I decided to put that one there since it is known for being disease resistant. There's not as great an airflow uh, as uh, the other space, um, but there's still decent airflow. And I think it would just be so, so pretty to have it there. So I'm excited to get that in the ground. I think it'll complement the colors really well. The other second rose that I planted, as I mentioned earlier, is a Munstead Wood David Austin Rose. This is one that I found at a local garden center here in the city. Um, it's really interesting. I've heard a lot of things about um, David Austin Roses at garden centers and how they can't get large quantities uh, or a large number of varieties. Um, and every garden center that I've found that has David Austin has only ever had three varieties. Um, and it's like hit and miss very much. So like the one up north, they had three varieties and they just weren't any that I was interested in, which is a bummer because they're still there and they're on sale. It makes a girl rethink things, but they don't smell um, especially fragrant. And I don't understand the purpose of a rose without scent. That's just a personal opinion take it or leave it, but if I'm gonna put in the work, uh, and it, 
they're beautiful, don't get me wrong, but they need to smell beautiful. Like part of a rose's attraction is its scent. Um, so I happened to smell them all multiple times in various stages of bloom. The ones they had didn't have any scent. This one was at a uh, garden center here. Um, when I was looking for, oh, I was not looking for a rose. I don't even remember what I was looking for. I think it might've been when I bought some clematis because um, I had been looking for a specific clematis that they did not have. Um, but I happened to walk past the roses and they had these David Austin ones. And this was right when my parents had said, you know, we really wish we would have bought a bare root one because they wanted to do some pots up on the deck with the roses. Um, and so I found this one. It's again, a beautiful rose. It smells absolutely divine. They have one in a pot on their deck at the cottage. So it'll be really interesting. Theirs was planted probably about a month and a half ago. I can review, I think that's about right, a month and a half ago. But it's something that they're gonna have to bring into the garage in the winter and water, which we do with our green stalks, uh, because it's not something that will survive if they left it on the deck in our, our weather, especially because it's extremely windy at the cottage, especially in the winter, it comes whipping uh, down the lake. Um, but so it'll be interesting to compare the growth habits and if how they like their spots. My mom, who will probably see this, likes to say that I kept the best one for myself. Um, what actually happened was they were both equally good looking. I, when I was bringing hers up to the cottage, it lost a branch, so they didn't quite look well. But I'd actually say hers looks probably better than mine does right now, mostly because hers has been in a, in a nice pot with lots of good accoutrements around it uh, for the last year. Anyway, I'm digressing. These Munstead wood, they'll grow about two and a half feet wide and three feet tall, uh, and it's a zone five through 10. So uh, it also is supposed to be known for its good disease resistance. Uh, it's a short, bushy one. So I thought along my deck would be a good spot for it because if it gets to that like three feet tall, I'll be able to see it just kind of bopping over things which is nice and I, I'm hoping I'll be able to smell it um, a lot because it's and it is just truly they called it oh, this is the description and I actually think it's spot on sometimes you read descriptions and you're like that's a little poetic wax poetic is it real I actually think this is a very accurate description one of the most accurate I've ever seen which is deep velvety crimson blooms strong old rose fragrance with fruity notes of blackberry blueberry and damson short bushy broad shrub with good disease, disease resistance can't speak to the disease resistance, um, but I, I do think that the, um, the blooms are truly velvety, like so luscious. I can't wait to show you guys when it finally, I, I think it's putting on some new growth right now. So it should have like one more smaller bloom cycle left before the end of the season. Anyway, uh, you might have be able to tell that nighttime has descended. I've always heard the adage, first year sleep, second year creep, third year leap. Uh, and I've definitely found that to be true. So I would actually say next year is probably the roses first years, but they should still have some beautiful flowers in the spring. And I can't wait to see them and watch them grow. Hopefully we'll keep the Japanese beetles and the soft flies away from them um, so we can enjoy the blooms together. Anyway, thanks guys for joining me today and sticking with me with the, through the wasp attacks and everything that happened. <laughs> oh, this little video is all over the place, but. I appreciate you sticking around and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.